it's actually a miracle, but no, uh, no understanding Western science how that works, that we can move our attention to uh, something within the field of our awareness, something, some object of our five senses. And that is an in, in, insight we, we might have, that the sense of reality we have, the sense of how we feel about what is happening right now, depends partly on what we pay attention to. And I tell you a little story, and then I shut up. Uh, and then after the break, I will talk about... Uh, the second movement we can do. So right now I t- I'm talking about this capacity of our mind to bring our our awareness to uh, uh, something which is at least neutral, but maybe even positive. <laughs> yeah? Neutral is already good. Neutral is very good. Uh, so there is a. I have told this story before, but I, I, I do it again, and then I will just uh, uh, stop to tell that story for half a year. <laughs> uh, so it's a story I, some of you know from uh, the book uh, uh, by Ajahn Brahm, who is a <coughs> monk in the Theravada tradition, an Englishman who live who lives in Thailand, and he is a monk since thirty years, and he is a very good storyteller. And there's a book with uh, collections of his stories. And there's one uh, story in the beginning of the, big, uh, in, of the book which is called The Two Bad Bricks, which is a very nice story about exactly that, how through the way we pay attention we create the sense of reality we live in. So in that story, Ajahn Brahm tells us how they started to build the monastery when he first went to Thailand. There was no monastery, so the monks had to build their monastery. So he had to learn to lay bricks. And then he started to make his first brick wall. And he describes how difficult it is for him. And you put the brick, and then you tap on it, and then it goes up, and then you tap on it, and then it goes up on the other side. <laughs> and, and, but then he said, I had all the patience as a monk, so I just took the time. Yeah. So he made the brick wall, and then he steps back to admire his brick wall. And then, oh no, he noticed two bricks which were out of angle the two bad bricks. And he was like shattered. Ah, oh, my, the, brick, the wall is, is, is horrible. So he goes to his abbot and says, I need to blow up this wall. <laughs> it's a bad wall. And the abbot says, no, the wall stays. stays. So, Ajahn Brahm really got to hate the wall <laughs> in, the, in the months after. And whenever there was visitors to the new monasteries, he tried to kind of bring them, bring them, uh, give, uh, lead them on under other paths so that they wouldn't see his wall. Yeah. And he was so ashamed about his wall. And then one day there was a visitor which changed the whole thing for him and which gave him a very important insight for his life. So this this visitor saw the wall and looked at the wall and said, oh, that's a nice brick wall. And Ajahn Brahm said, are you blind? (laughs) Don't you see these two bad bricks in the middle of the wall? And then the man said something which really was a kind of liberation experience of Ajahn Brahm. He said, yes, I see the two bad breaks, but 
But I also see the 998 perfect bricks. On the right of the bad bricks, on the left of the bad bricks, above the bad bricks, and under the bad bricks are perfect bricks. And that was like, ah, oh, yes. And that's what we do inside of us. That's what we do with other people, unless we are in love with them. <laughs> yeah. Then you are in the beginning blind. Yeah. Yeah. But that's how we often relate to a certain experience, right? This moment. Yeah. So how to how how would it be to start to realize that there is much more, I mean, infinite more good and healthy with you than wrong? Yeah. And think about it. It's always like that. Like we have this tiny cut in the finger, yeah? Like tiny. And the rest of the body is okay. And then we are like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With other people as well. And we, sometimes we, we start to kind of cultivate this view on the two bad bricks. And then that's what we see in another person. It usually starts about two, three months after you, you start to live with someone. <laughs> then the long process, it takes a few years, but in the end you might see only the two bad bricks and then you divorce. So that's how, to, through the way we pay attention, we 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 cultivate the sense of reality. And then, uh, in the end, he says, he said, uh, Ajahn Brahm uh, says that he had told this story quite often uh, when he is visiting Australia, and uh, he's Australian. And uh, uh, one night, a man came up, a builder came up to him and said, to him, you know, we builders, we always, always make mistakes when we build houses. We always make mistakes. But then we sell these mistakes as special features. <laughs> and we charge more. <laughs> and then Ajahn Brahm says, you know, think about it. Maybe that what you want to fix in yourself, what you can't stand in yourself, what you are afraid of in yourself, is actually your special feature and is actually what you are most loved for by your friends. You are not loved for being uh, smart and, you know, always on top of things and, and you know, successful. You know, imagine we would be how we <laughs> dream to be, what assholes. <laughs> yeah? No, actually, our, our, our friends, they, they, they love us for the weaknesses, for the pain we went through, for the tears we share, for the fears we have. That's where we connect. That's where friendship is. So it is. The insecurity, you know, we all want to be secure and successful and on top of things. That's not what we are loved for. We are loved for sharing vulnerability. So it's true. Well, there is something, I mean, there's no, yeah, there is something in there for us, I think. Okay. <clears throat> so let's uh, slide into sitting quietly uh, without having a sense of, so now I'm going to meditate, I'm going to start to beat that <laughs> or overcome that, whatever it is.
but to just uh, have a sense of you know, like if you would go to a, to a beach and uh, you you just sit, settle down by the by the beach and you make a gesture of openness and you you look out into the outer landscape the sense of openness with a sense of allowing so similar we can make this gesture to the inner landscape yeah to the inner landscape just uh, to open while somewhat being centered by the body and breath not in the sense of concentrating and focusing but in a very kind and gentle way and if you like after some time you can close your eyes but if you come to a place where you notice that you start to struggle uh, that you have a sense oh this is I, I can't meditate mm. then you just open your eyes and you look around and you soak in the presence of the other people let them meditate for you So you could start with uh, the sensation in your body and the sense of being carried by the floor, by the chair. And give yourself the permission now for the next 20 minutes to do nothing. And if you let yourself be carried by the floor or chair, then maybe you can notice how your body softens somewhat. The head is balanced, shoulders relaxed. Bring some attention to your face. Without trying to calm down. And then the breath, the flow of the in and out breath. And the flow and of the in and out breath, I invite you to make that the sensation which you bring to the foreground. Not that it is in conflict with everything else, it's just you bring it somewhat to the foreground. And you release your thoughts and the other feelings and the sounds into the background. And of course there are thoughts, no problem. Mental images, the feelings you have. Let them be. And then slowly maybe you can have a sense that your thoughts drift like clouds, neither rejecting them nor taking them too serious. See if you can allow yourself to stop to try to figure things out and to understand or to defend yourself. There's nothing here to understand or 